Hello, Internet fans, and welcome to 3B Video. I'm your host, Rotten Roger DeMarco, and today we're going to be ranking the Hatchet franchise. Why? Because Reverend Zombie told me to. Have you ever seen Bayou Beavers? Sure! No. So before we get started with this, I got to offer a disclaimer for how I rank the films. The way that I rank these films is by how much fun I have with each entry, not by which film is a better movie by a critical standpoint. So now that we got that out of the way, let's get on with the ranking. So coming in at number four is Hatchet 2. This movie picks up right where Hatchet 1 ends, and Mary Beth Dunstan takes off from Honey Island Swamp and runs back to New Orleans to recruit Reverend Zombie and a bunch of other hunter-type dudes, including A.J. Bowen, to head off back to Honey Island Swamp and take out Victor Crowley. It's a pretty fun entry in the franchise. I'm slowly coming around to liking this one a little bit more. The gore is over the top. You've got John Carl Beekler in there as old Jack Cracker drinking his piss. You've got R.A. Mihaloff, A.J. Bowen, Colton Dunn. The list goes on and on with these characters. The thing that I like the most about Hatchet 2 is that it dives into Victor Crowley's backstory and we get to see Kane Hodder playing Victor Crowley's dad and we get to find out about this curse that has turned Victor Crowley into this repeater, as they call him in these films, a, a repeating ghost who every night he's doomed to come back and haunt the swamp. It's really nice to see Kane Hodder get to flex his acting muscles, and he has a love scene, and he cries, and it's not something that you see the guy who plays Jason do very often, so uh, I love this movie for that. But for right now, it's number four on my list. So moving on to my number three Hatchet film, the original Hatchet. Blasphemy, I know. This is a great movie that obviously started the franchise, but it's not without its limitations. There was a lot of compromises made during the creation of this film. So as a result, what we get is a lot of setup, murder, run, stop, murder, run, stop, murder. That is the formula of this movie, and that's its main shortcoming. But the creature design is fantastic for Victor Crowley in this movie. The look has drastically changed over the course of the franchise, but the comedy is on point in this movie, and I think this movie does set the tone for the franchise. If you came into this franchise expecting a straightforward tribute to 80s slashers without the comedy, you would probably be scratching your head going, why, why is this so funny? why I shouldn't be laughing. And that's the type of stuff that Adam Green does. Adam Green makes these love letters to the horror genre, but he's a very funny person. So the comedy is right there with the horror and they walk hand in hand in the Hatchet franchise. Everything that he does under the Aeriscope label sort of ties into one another. So there's all of these neat little references, like whether it's to the TiVo or whether it's to Reverend Zombie or whether it's to the Jack Chop, all of this stuff is sort of hidden in the franchise, including a lot of references to Quaj Island, which is where Kane Hodder is from. I love the first Hatchet. Obviously, without it, we wouldn't have the rest of the franchise. But the films got better as the franchise went along, at least for me. The comedy really got punched up. We got a lot of new characters. We got a lot of fun stuff and reoccurring jokes. We all look alike. It's hilarious. So that's why the first Hatchet is number three on my list. So moving on to my number two Hatchet film, Victor Crowley. This is the newest entry in the franchise at the point of recording this video. So obviously I'm a little biased because when Adam Green was doing his tour for the anniversary of the original Hatchet, he kind of sprung this movie on us. Oh, guess what? I made a new Hatchet movie and we all went and we're in the audience with Adam Green and we get to watch Victor Crowley. It was a very emotional night. Tears were shed, hugs were given, and burgers were eaten. So I hold this movie very near and dear to my heart. I know that a lot of people consider this the weakest entry in the franchise because it was done on a very shoestring budget and it was done in secret and it's all centralized to one location. So I can understand why some people didn't vibe very well with this movie. But since it's new and I'm still in that honeymoon phase with this movie, I just love everything about it. You have some truly creative kills. You got a penis. You get all kinds of weird stuff in this movie. The cast is great. Everybody from Tiffany Shepis to Felissa Rose. But in all honesty, the person who steals the fucking show in this movie is Dave Sheridan. And some of you might remember him 
as Officer Doofy in Scary Movie. Adam Green has been quoted as saying that this guy has a rubber face. You see him in movies and you don't realize that it's him. Take my word for it, if you have not seen Victor Crowley, this guy is a fucking comedy genius. You cannot see this movie and not be tickled by his performance. He's just this pure character who is adorable, he's sweet, but he's an idiot, and he kind of represents the audience in a weird way. You just are rooting for this guy. You're like, I like him, and he should make it. It almost made number one on my list. Obviously, that's why it's number two. Hadoi neck brace, Scream Queens reference, deep cut. So moving on to my number one Hatchet film, Hatchet 3. Oh, motherfucking yes, do I love this movie. This is my go-to, I need to kill an hour and a half, let's have fun, shut our brains off movie. It's everything I want, minus the titties. It's a bunch of testosterone-driven tough guys with guns hunting down Victor Crowley, which gives Kane Hodder an excuse to murder like 36 people on screen. And it's fucking glorious. And again, the cast is outstanding. Zach Galligan, Carolyn Williams, Sid Haig. It really is the movie that you watch and you just shut your brain off. It starts, it's so fast paced and violent and the gore is top notch. And I think this is the only film in the Hatchet franchise that Adam Green himself did not direct. So it has a very different vibe. The comedy is there, but there's a lot more cussing in this movie. It's like you're watching one of my videos. Fuck this, fuck that, fuck you, you motherfucking fuck. What the movie lacks in character development, it makes up for in pure carnage. And that's why I just enjoy this movie. This to me is a nine o'clock in the morning movie. This is a 5 p.m. movie. This is a two in the morning movie. This is anytime cinema for me at 3B Video. Anytime I just wanna watch Kane Hodder murder a handful of people, this is where I'm going. Dare I say that I actually might like this movie more than some of the entries in the Friday the 13th franchise. I really, really like Hatchet 3, guys. In fact, Hatchet 3 was one of the first reviews that I did on this channel way back in the day. So uh, if you feel so inclined to watch that terrible review, I'll put it somewhere. I love the character of Victor Crowley. I love the fact that he has his very own unique set of rules, and that is just built-in sequel fuel. You can't stop Victor Crowley. You can't stop these movies. So as long as there's a will, there's a way. Anytime Adam Green can't sleep and he bangs out a 90-page script, and if he keeps it in one central location, I will take Hatchet 45. Support it, because one day, they'll stop making them. But either way, that's why Hatchet 3 made my number one. It's because it's just too much fun. Let me know your list in the comments. Let me know what I did right, what I did wrong, what you like more, what you hate more. But I suppose I should probably get going, because after all, there's a lot of movies out there. Somebody's got to watch them. So why not me, right?